The following podcast has been brought to you by Audible.com. Sign up now using the URL audibletrial.com forward slash TTV to get a free audiobook of your choosing. We recommend Brick by Brick, how Lego rewrote the rules of innovation and conquered the global toy industry. You may recognize this as one of the sources we use in our show, Bionicle Autopsy. Remember, that's audibletrial.com forward slash TTV. Enjoy the show. Five, four, three, two, one, sync. Hey, everybody. I'm Var. I'm LJ. I'm Kahi. I'm Takumanova. And this is TTV Talks. What is it with everyone starting these with John Cena? It's mm. funny. John Cena's the best. We, I'm pretty sure I found and showed you guys that prank call a long time ago. Maybe was prank it me call. who showed it? The prank call. I mean, where, I, I, I saw it before. You saw it before? Saw it on Facebook. First Basically, time I saw it was on Facebook. We all saw it like years ago though, right? It, it was, it's, this is not a recent thing. No. Nah. It's, it's pretty interesting that all of a sudden it became viral. Well, it, it's. I mean, the way the reason I think we do it is because of the uh, the casting call that we that I made. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. And, but like and, uh, X on board. You you see on the internet how John Cena like that meme is kind of like the, now the new Rick roll, right? Which is a no, weird I way to put actually. it. Have you not seen that on a on on like a Imgur and stuff? No, I mean okay. I don't use Imgur. Imgur is for okay. stupid people. Whoa! Well, anyhow, that's, that's, <laughs> those are, that's a strong word. Those are strong accusations, by. But it, yeah, it no, lists. it's like it's um, it's pretty like common now. Only now, like very, very recently, that people use John C- like a Rickroll. Basically, they'll be like, you know, uh, and his name, you know, they'll, they'll be like Robert Downey Jr. But you know, they show the scene from Iron Man. He's like, you know, I have a secret to tell y'all. I am, and it says John Cena, and he did the thing, and he's coming out. That's like a new meme. But it's based off that video that was really old. So, anyhow. I'm done. Yeah, the prank call video. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> prank call memes, old stuff. This is all new to me. <laughs> Come on. Memes are super mature, Var. Yeah, super mature. You know what isn't old, or actually has been really a new experience for me, though? Hmm. Freaking flooding. <laughs> flooding? <laughs> flooding. Yeah. It's, flooding. It, it has been flooded here for like the past two weeks now. Really? Yep. Um. I guess uh, there was this, uh, I guess, record-breaking rainfall for uh, the Carolinas, for both South Carolina and North Carolina. South Carolina got it much worse than I, and, like than we did in North Carolina. I'm in. Uh, I'm pretty close to the coast, though. So when the rain happened, and it kept going, and kept going, and then six days later, it's still going. I was like, oh boy, <laughs> this is this isn't gonna be good. And lo and behold, it it wasn't very good. There was flooding all throughout my uh, my uh, city, um, so that was a thing. We had to deal with that. I couldn't go to school for like a couple of days, and uh, I'm still filling the uh the the the, the aftermath of it too, because um I guess somehow water got into my gas tank. No, oh <laughs> man, oh, is, is that and what, is that it? That that is what happened. Uh, because I told LJ about this outside of call. Yeah, but um. So I didn't find out about this until like you know I, I'm heading to school halfway there, and as I'm driving, my car kind of sputters, and I'm like, okay, that was a little odd. That ha- that hasn't happened before. Keep driving, get to a red light, hit the gas, and oh. just just stops. Just right there at the at the intersection, just stops. Oh no. And I'm like, uh, 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 luckily it was, I was able to just like rev the engine and it, it, it picked up and I drove back home, but man, that was an, that was an experience. And obviously the next few times I tried to get my car, it just would not, would not start up. Just wouldn't start. At first I thought it was a battery issue, not a battery issue. Cause it, I was able to get it to start and then it would just cut off, which made, made me think it was an accelerator issue. Thankfully it's not. Te- I t- uh, checked the accelerator. Took like two days to diagnose that it was a fuel problem. I had a friend that was a mechanic that came over and checked it out. Um, so I had to go get my fuel line cleaning, which cost like 80 bucks. Ouch. I had to buy sea foam to uh, clear out the uh, the water and uh, in my uh, fuel, which I had just gotten like a full tank of fuel too. It was brand new fuel before the flood happened. So that was money. That was like uh, 
20, 40 bucks down the drain. Um, plus the, you know, plus the 80 bucks to clean my fuel engine. So yeah, that was, that, that was fun. You know, that having a car, like having a car is, is pretty awesome until it's not awesome. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> until I am it's no more good with cars. Um, yeah. Great. It, it just, yeah. I mean, you know about that too, Kai, because we had some issues in New York. With we, your car. we had some issues in New York. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> that basically, um, my car had the same thing where like we had a pothole and the brake. There's a, there's a little thing, which is, I'm assuming there's a, a car guy out there who knows why this is. And there's a perfectly good reason for it. I think it's kind of stupid. There's a brake sensor in my car. What happens if you hit that brake sensor, if it comes dislodged, all your brakes lock up. So we just hit a pothole. It was a little hard. We hit a pothole and was like, boom, wow. And then the brakes just locked up and they, we couldn't go anywhere. And it cost yeah, Jersey me several sucks. hundred dollars. <laughs> okay. oh, oh. Jersey is a very bad place to be. Jer- <laughs> they need to clean up those roads This bad. year, when I when I went to New York, I stayed in a freaking hotel like a freaking adult and inside Times Square. And I didn't go in the Jersey and do that stupid commute on the subway. Which is <laughs> It's so, funny you mentioned you're, you specified adult because I have a feeling that a lot of our audience who might be watching this video has no clue at all what we're talking about. That, that's right, how kids. To relate to it. If you stay in a hotel, that's when you're an adult. Forget what the law says about being well, I mean, 18. I, you know, we, I, I guess we did, we did the same thing last year, too, where we did a very, like, adult-ish thing, and we <laughs> rented... <laughs> I, I'm trying to go. I, I, was, I mean, like, we, we did our own we travel. Rented, we traveled we did to our a new own state. Travel. We had our own business and we had our own bank account and we took money from that bank account to pay for a company trip to New York. And I was very proud yeah. of that. I was very proud of that. We, we, yeah, we stayed at a hotel. We went to a convention. We met a lot of people. You know, and I mm-hmm. think that was a pretty adult thing yeah, to do, it was right? For our, for our business, too. It was for, uh, for the channel and for Bionicle. Yeah. But, Man, I, I never want to go back to being a kid. <laughs> it sucks. I, I feel like, cause, well, the one, see, okay, listen, see, the one thing I hear from people who are I want older, to have like, my cake I, and eat it too. <laughs> see, no, I, I never like cake. I, I didn't, I didn't care about cake. You don't I hate cake. Cake, cake sucks. Well, I'm still, I'll, I'll eat pie. I like pie. Pie's I'm going to eat pie regardless of whether I'm a kid or an adult. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just have to like look at the, the the scale the next day and regret my decision. But that's okay. Figure we out whether or not what it's an everybody adult pie. what everybody wants an adult pie. is the freedom of being an adult and the freedom of being a kid at the same time. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't want to go back into being. Is there a kid, really any freedom but, for being? I remember I hated, absolutely despised being a kid and not having any freedom or any control you, over my okay, life. Okay, well at you, all. you know what you know what's probably different. It was ridiculous. Though? Me and Takuma. Uh, we were, and LJ, we were all homeschooled. So yeah. what that meant is that we did have, I feel like I had a bit more freedom than most kids my age. Mm. Oh, absolutely. I could, like, for, for school, this is what would happen. I had, my mom would give me a list and said, these are all your assignments that need to be done this Friday. And I could do them any point in time. And from then on, as long as I got those assignments done by Friday, I could do whatever I wanted throughout the entire week. Now, if I didn't, I was grounded for next week. But... If I did, I could just you know, I could just go and do whatever. So I I would like I would sp- I would stay up till three in the morning, well, I mean, and then I'd get up at like eleven, and then you know maybe if I felt like going out and hanging out with some friends or doing something in the woods, I could totally go and do that. And I had no responsibilities. <laughs> I had in the woods. I mean, like, you know, like like you're a kid, right? So you you get like Sometimes a stick, the plumbing you, sticks, you know, and you go out okay. and you fight right, imaginary yeah. monsters. Yeah, no, that's true. That's we'll true. See. Yeah, but I guess like the freedom comes in different aspects because like for right. example, you mentioned you get grounded. I never got grounded before. I've never okay. been grounded. Yeah. See, so fair enough. That's why you're uh, so such a terrible person yeah. now. I guess. I mean, Kai, it, it's kind of funny because so. I, I had a little I'm bit of a I'm mix kidding. between the two of you. I never got grounded either, but I also did that assignment thing as well. So I get it done by a certain point in time and day. Right. So it's kind of a little bit of a mix. And you but, could also add other things to your school. Like for me, my parents would add like comic making or like stuff I did online for even like for YouTube. They would, that was part of my like extracurricular activity. Deal. Mm, so not I for me. To do that. Yeah, not for me. I either. was not that lucky. <laughs> well, I mean, it paid off for me. I do graphic design as my job now, and I did that because of comic oh, yeah. making, you know. So that's another thing. Honestly, Jobs. okay, Ooh. that's that's the big deal. When you're a kid, you don't have to like. Sure, you don't have a lot of freedom, but you also don't have to worry about crap. 
Like you don't have to worry. <laughs> yeah, about... that, very true. There's that, not, the most you, you have to free. worry about is whether like you like that girl you have a crush on likes you or not. Yeah, thinks you're a freak. W- whether or not you have <laughs> enough allowance to get her like a little flower or something. Yeah, like or you could like convince your parents to let you take her to the movies or something. Which, by the way, or well, convince uh, we've your parents already to let established you date. in relationships. <laughs> relationships in middle school are stupid. <laughs> don't do it. Don't yeah. do it. I like. I do like the fact that afterwards, because you know one of my biggest things while we were doing that. TDV talks was you know I'm I am an advocate of not before you're 18 and after that episode someone sends me a message like they're trying to ask for advice or something it wasn't entirely clear but they pretty <laughs> much start out with I'm not 18 yet it's I like, remember this what answer do you want me to give you already know the answer okay you may not be 18 yet but you sent me a very personal message on a message board so you obviously know your stuff. Yeah, I know, right? It's like, obviously, you're asking people you've never met on the internet for advice, so I think you're mature enough to handle it. <laughs> I hope he doesn't listen to this. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, no, if just, he does, then he doesn't hear this. Yeah, you, okay, honestly, fine, you fair just, point. You, but like, you don't become exempt to the rule just because you ask a question. <laughs> right. But b- basically, though, the same thing applies in which, like, you don't, like, for me, one of the things I have to worry about is, crap, I don't have any money to eat. What am That's I going to eat? That's a uh, thing. Nobody has to I worry never about that. Had There's to always worry. ramen noodles. Uh, I have. I <laughs> ran Dude, out of ramen. I have never appreciated ramen more in my life. Dude, I, I eat so much bad. ramen. It's, it's so funny. cheap. I have never had you ramen see, before in my life. It's different for me. Though. LJ, you're barely an adult. Yeah, I mean, come on. I, don't, yeah, don't out of everyone here, I'm probably the least adulty adult. <laughs> I'm an adult. That's true. I just realized that, yeah, that's actually true. We are all legally adults, too. We're not just saying we're adults. Yeah, yeah no, 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 we're, we're not legally sitting here speaking, going, we're all adults. I'm 16, but and I, like, worked a job once, so, no, I, no we're all I am, by law. I believe I'm the most, and I don't mean this to, you know, to brag, but, hey, you know, I'm successful. Now, you, I think you I'm the most, the most adult. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm the most adult out of everyone here, because I live, I live by myself, and I work yeah. for my own rent. I mean, like, my parents don't, like, Screw help you me too, out dude. here or there, but, uh... You know, so everything I kind of have, I pay for myself through job and all that stuff. So I'm officially Which on sucks. my own. Which is the worst. It, Which it is freaking sucks, worst. Yeah. You know what I, I miss the most is like you go somewhere. You know, when I live with my parents, you could go somewhere and you could come back. And then you could eat something. Like when you came back, there would be something to eat. And if you didn't like what you want to eat, you could go out and buy it. But you always had a default like, well, I don't have anything. Like, you, you, you know, your mom could make you something to eat. You don't have that anymore when you move out by yourself. You, you like you have to like you have to think if I go home I have to make food and is that worth my time or can I just go to sleep because I have to you know study for this exam for tomorrow I guess and speaking I- of that I don't know how like it is for it was for you Kahi and how it was for you Takuma and or LJ but like for me the whole prospect of like moving out finding a place to live going to school to a university or figuring out what job i'm going to apply for and all the schools i'm going to apply to was the most stressful part of my life <sighs> so far i see and, i haven't had to worry about well okay, sorry continue and, okay uh, and like i guess the funny thing is like perspective wise now that i'm kind of in like the college setting where i'm going to school and i'm driving and doing my own stuff like i still live with my parents right now i'm moving out next year but it's like now that i got that perspective it seems like a lot of that stress was kind of misplaced i feel like it was a lot easier of a transition than i was expecting it to be as a high school student mm-hmm I don't know if that was the same for you, Kai, when you were like, oh, I got to find my own place or move to my own place. Well, actually, no, because you had, you were basically given a house. I well, yeah, well, okay. Basically, this is how it went. When I was a, when I was in high school, I finished up all my high school stuff real early. So my parents, uh, they were going to graduate me, and then they found out that if I went to a community college while I was a high school student, they would pay for those two years of community college. I could get I could get those credits free called dual enrollment. So I did that. Instead of graduating, I went and I did – I immediately did like full-time college. And I got uh, two years of college done and, uh, you know, all that stuff. So by that time, I was still living with my parents, but I had I had transitioned into going to school and doing that already. So I was kind of comfortable with that. And I, I got – I transferred to university here 
and uh, my parents moved away and they left me their house. So I stayed in the house for about a year and then they wanted to sell the house. So I had to go and find an apartment and I, I was lucky to find an apartment, a new apartment building that was being built uh, where I was on the campus. And uh, it was like, it was completely new, all new amenities. All, it had like all these great features. It had gigabit internet, it had all that stuff. And I was also lucky to get a job there later on too. So that paid for my rent. So right now, uh, I have my job at the apartment pays for my rent and a bit on more on the side. And then I have this job and, uh, you know, and I had other jobs along the way. But it, it wasn't super stressful. Um, I don't mean to sound like, you know, but I've just I've just never really had that much of a hard time finding a job before. There's not been a time where I haven't had at least uh, – actually, since I was 16, I've never had less than two jobs. If you count the channel as, you know, as a, as a job, but by now it basically is. It's a good, decent sized job. Um, well, aren't you lucky, huh? Yeah, hmm. I was just, I was, oh, I, stuff happened. I just happened to know the right people. <laughs> I happened to be at the right place at the right time. I had a job as security analyst. I've had a job as a network operator for a TV station. I've had a job as a shelver at a library. I've had a job as a uh, like graphic designer at some like a church. I've had a, you know all these other like Gee, kind Kahi, of aren't you weird, privileged? Crazy privileged <laughs> I mean, jobs. <laughs> I'm not sure if privileged is the right word because he is working. For yeah, no, I know. It's I'm not like it around. was handed to him, but <laughs> the opportunity to work, I guess, has been sort of handed yeah. to you. <laughs> yeah, the opportunity to work and the opportunity to like learn and do all that stuff, I, I'll admit, has been. Yeah, there. fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, very much See, so. But. Me, on the other hand, right now, I'm just struggling to find a job. You know, I went through the whole college thing. I'm not worried about getting a house because I pretty much know what I'm going to want. But I don't have the means to pay for it until I get a job, and my problem is with that. I just can't give mm -hmm. get getting anyone to give me the time of day is impossible. Is it really? Yeah, you're like you're kind of you're at the time to try and find like a full time job too, right? Yeah, That's I'm, I'm not I'm for. not just going for a job. I'm going for a career at this point. Right. right. Yeah. See, I'm that not at that right. point yet. I'm still building my portfolio and planning my career. Yeah. And it's you like, know. So I have to. That's that's a must be a very interesting. When I finally, fig you know, for the longest time, I just felt like I was dragging my feet, spinning my wheels, however you want to put it, didn't know what on earth I was going to do to go forward in my life. Once I finally figured out, hey, I want to go to college for, you know, IT, I, you know, from that point on, everything was just like, boom, I felt like my whole life was laid out ahead of me. I knew exactly how everything was going to go. And, you know, I liked the classes. I figured out, okay, I'm going to do an emphasis on web design and development. And I was getting really good grades and all kinds of honors and, you know, Phi Theta Cap. I'm like, at this point, I'll be able to graduate, like, best student 2015, be able to pretty much have my choice of job, and then it's all downhill from there. That is not what happened. I graduated in May, and I still, I just can't get anything. Hmm. Huh. I, I've gone over my resume so many times, I... The problem is that employers seem to be putting up this wall around them to avoid any sort of extra interaction. It's like that is if something you try I've to do anything beyond just send in a resume, it's darn near impossible. It's hard to find direct phone numbers for any of these places. You only wind up with like you know 800 yeah. numbers for customer support or whatever. Uh, you try sending emails. There's no guarantee they're going to you know. Send oh my god! And back, <laughs> freaking online applications have been it, a thing you know, too that have gotten incredibly frustrating. Just, it, it's and funny for good, a lot good. of these jobs, you can't just walk in because a lot of the jobs, especially the ones I'm going for, are in like these big buildings with all these offices and stuff, and you have to you have to be like buzzed in. You know, if you don't have an appointment ahead of time, there's nothing doing. How are you going to get an appointment? Emailing, calling them, either of those work. Yeah, I've only it, had one actual interview I've gone in for since I graduated. Uh, yeah, like five months ago. And how did that work out? Well, he's oh. not working, so how well do you <laughs> think that worked yeah. out? That pretty much yeah, okay, worked out well, huh? You know, it's interesting that you bring that up, though, because my younger brother, Speeder, he has also been applying for jobs, like, ferociously. Well, that's an overstatement. But he really wanted to work at this one place. It was like a hardware store. And he walks in saying, hey, where can I find an application? They tell him, go online. Mm -hmm. See, that... that that's the word I, See, hate, okay. I hate online Listen, applications because there's like there's no guarantee anyone's gonna read it or even give you the time of day and you don't get that like interaction with yep. your potential employees. Yes, all here's, so impersonal. Yeah, no, no, you're you're completely right. And even when you get even when you don't get the job, they usually don't even tell you. It's like you just have to sit there and wonder if they ever even read it or if it got missed or. 
Like, at most, you may get an automated email thing telling you the position's no longer available or anything. But it's all just so impersonal and honestly downright rude these days. Yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, you have a if you're it's a big IT company special, you have to go through a ton of them at the same time. Like we're we're gonna do that same thing ourselves uh, if we ever hire people where we're gonna have to go online and people are gonna have to submit their resume uh, online and stuff, and we're gonna have to like reject them with form letters and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, but we're unless an you're online getting more than company like entirely. Entirely. Unless Yeah, we don't have a physical location. Right. Well, I I guess like for me, with, you, here's with what that I've said done. though. With that said, though, if we did have a physical location, I wouldn't want a bunch of fans just showing up and exactly. submitting applications every every single hour. Oh, so yeah. I, I do understand that. Right. I feel like for what, what I've always done is that if I know an application is online, I will go online and I'll fill out the application. And I'll, then I'll send it in, but also print it out. And then I'll go to the company again and think, so here, here's my application and here's my resume. I wanted to turn this into. And usually, if you give it to a secretary, I mean, you know, they'll be well, like, "Oh, okay, well, I, you know, sometimes you might not get there." But from my experience, that usually kind of creates a negative persona of you, like you're pestering them. Though there's a fine line between being the squeaky wheel that gets the grease and being the squeaky wheel that gets replaced. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not saying it's like it's a sound strategy that'll work every no. time for your job. I mean, but my. My in strategy my, is pretty much is send an application, wait, you know, two days, and then try to call them. If also, experience was hard for me. That was a hard one oh, yeah. before I got it's my the, job. It's the catch-22. Right. You can't get experience because you don't have experience. Right. Yeah. And that, that the, only, the only job I was able to, like, my first job I was finally able to get after, like, applying to all kinds of places, was I, I, I literally walked into this place that was just opening. They had been trying to open for, like, a month and, like, their systems were taking too long to ship, and, like, the people that they had em- employed were like, okay, so when are we going to start working? And, you know, they couldn't open until their systems were there, so a lot of the people dropped out. So they were pretty desperate. So my first job, I just walked in, I was like, hey, uh, can I have a job? And they were like, yes, please, we need people. <laughs> <laughs> it, we, they were, I, I literally had the job the next day, so, like... That was very, really, very lucky, and now I've got that experience. The only time that happened for me was for a seasonal position at retail, and that lasted for about a year before I got sick of waking up at three or four in the morning every day. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, uh, early retail does mornings suck. are the worst when you're working. Because I had two jobs, I would work. They are. First, I would work the first job from like four a.m. to. 10, 11 ish. Then I would go work my other job from 11 until like 9 at night. See, I, so I was working like 55 ish hours a week. Were, you worked retail. Working that job, like actually working and not just the waking up hours, would wake you, up, would you advise it to anyone? Makeup. Would you recommend anyone at least do well, that once? Mm, see, I can't. I think you're getting at the fact that I like worked with people or like with customers. No, and no, stuff. just, just generally, or... just any part of retail. Well, I guess it depends. I mean, for me, I I was working uh, essentially stocking shelves. I'd get there long before you know customers showed up, and I would put all the groceries and the product and all that stuff on the shelves. You know, make sure everything looked decent, that sort mm-hmm. of thing. Yeah, I definitely. Th- you what job I think everyone should work at least once is something to do with customer service, especially if you wind up with something that has a drive through I think everyone needs to work a drive through and just put up with the worst that humanity has to offer at least once. Yeah, because then they won't be total jerks when they're, exactly. <laughs> when they're the ones getting food. I Holy swear, crud. people do not under... Uh, so, my job, I was a waiter. Hmm. And that was... I, I will never work in the food, in, food industry again. I, mm-hmm. lo- I love the fact that I was able to get that job so easily and I got the experience from it, but oh my god. Dealing with people, especially a- about food, around food, I don't know what it is about food, but people get really, really irritable when it comes to food right. and how oh, they yeah. want food prepared well, and people, when they expect to get it. People mm-hmm. are always irritable when they're hungry and when they're craving something, and whenever you go to like, a restaurant, you get all those people who have decided... I'm hungry today, and I they're want something hangry. to eat right now. So they're, they're very, like, they're very irritable. Same thing with, like, IT, Takuma, because I used to work, I, or I worked in IT, IT security. You always get people who are frustrated, because that's when they call you, is when they're frustrated. So right, when they need something they done. They call you when something something's done. wrong. Right, they call you when something's wrong. Obviously, things are not going well for them already. 
Um, and man, there are some stupid people in IT. Stupid. There are some really stupid people. Oh, okay. It seems like the dumber you are, the more angry and irritable you get. Well, I mean, I can't. Can you blame them? They're stupid. Wouldn't you be like, angry yeah. if you're stupid? I'd be pretty angry if I was there, stupid. There are some stupid people in IT, but I almost kind of just give that that one over like food because it's IT and it does deal with technical technical stuff. There's nothing that hard to figure out about sandwiches. I mean, people you who say can't. that. But then you've also got the people who are yeah, like, no. oh, yeah, I, know. I, I, I wanted avocado on the side and a spritz of mayonnaise. Those people are just and high a maintenance. A spritz of mayonnaise. <laughs> oh, yeah. We get off, something. We get no, 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 LJ. Not mayonnaise. 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 Oh, oh my apologies. A spritz of mayonnaise. I mean, this could literally be TTV Talks About Jobs, and I could just go on and on about all the stupid customers I have. Oh yeah, no. My, I've I've had the only. Th- I remember the one time. There, I do want to get this one out of the way because it's one of my. It's one of my favorite stories and favorite of anyone I tell this to. Um, so I was working in the kitchen at this restaurant, and there's a speaker in there, so you can hear what's going on in the drive-through. That way, you know what's coming before it comes, and you can start working on it, get everything <laughs> out faster. Oh, okay, okay. I thought I thought you meant like, oh, so you know that you can you know what an irritable person's coming because they're going to be like raging. Well, okay. <laughs> granted that too sometimes. You know what's coming before it comes. That too sometimes, but no, so you can hear what's what people are ordering and start working on it. That way it gets out faster. This, so I'm listening on the, this is like mid after, mid late afternoon when there's not really a lot of business. So I'm the only one in the kitchen at the time. And this person comes through and I think it was actually my sister working at the time. She answers the drive through. This woman on the other side, she, um, we had, for context, we had our seasonal walleye sandwich. And she looks at the menu and she says, your walleye sandwich, is that made of chicken? Where do you have to be <laughs> from that you don't know a walleye is a fish? Wait, I didn't know that. I mean, I didn't know that. <laughs> okay, okay, but you don't live in Minnesota. That's true, that's true. Minnesota is a, is a very I, fish... I, but I live in Wilmington, and we're on the coast. Okay, we are one of the a beach biggest... Right I say I say we as if I still work there, but one of the biggest sellers of walleye in the country. All right, fair enough. Well, I, I mean, I don't know. I, okay, I mean, okay. I feel like that might be expecting a bit. Okay, much, maybe maybe, okay. maybe that's more of a you know maybe that's only funny to local people. Try this one for size. Then okay. I'm at the I'm at the register. Person okay. comes up. We've got a big old poster up on our menu. Shows the mushroom and Swiss burger. Shows the burger. There's like a mush, fresh mushroom sitting alongside, it, and there's the slices of mushrooms falling off and melt, you know, mingling with the melted cheese. And this person points to the poster, looks at me, and says, "That mushroom and Swiss burger. Does it have mushrooms?" <laughs> okay. Okay. See, that's stupid. Okay. That's okay, stupid. Yeah. That's that, pretty. There you stupid. go. That's pretty stupid. I literally just stared at them for five seconds because I couldn't figure out if they were really dumb or trying to make a joke. Unfortunately, maybe he was just really high. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. On mushrooms. Honestly, I I appreciate high people. Oh. Oh. Okay. I'm they tip well. They tip well. I I, I I appreciate them because yeah, they usually tip well. Or try and to sell usually- it to you. Oh, they. I mean, they do do that as well. <laughs> or, or they might be kind of slow in getting their order and knowing what they want. But at least they are trying to be sort of nice. I guess they're more worried about their impression and rather than being mad at you because <laughs> they don't want to appear high. <laughs> right. They don't. They don't want to appear high. But they're high. So like, it's it's a win win for you because like you're not gonna have someone yelling at you. Yeah. Unless for like twenty boys, right? Uh, wow. So yeah, uh, lesson for all you kids out there: smoke some weed. No, whoa, hang on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, okay, and okay. LLC does Hold not up. fully endorse the words for our <laughs> But no, uh, I have no, never I encountered anyone while working that was drunk or high or on anything. But BS. Yep. You worked at a boxing place. I, I There's know. No, I so, know. Someone was high. Okay. Well, Listen, there, I've got, there, I've got, there was I've got a one friend. guy. There was one I've guy got a friend that... that works at McDonald's, and he has told me all the like the horror stories. Literally everybody there is on some kind of drug. <laughs> a, a new a new manager came in the other like a, a an assistant manager who was training to be on um, one of the managers at, at a different location at the uh, uh in town I guess um he came in first day on the job he told my friend uh, dude <laughs> I am really cracked out right now <laughs> just. <laughs> 
I remember. I remember on my first day as the waiter, the freaking cook asked me if I wanted any blow. Mother of <laughs> pearl. I, no, I don't snort cocaine. <laughs> Jeez, he's like, it's, it's like, a food industry, man. Trust me, you need it. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is about the food industry, but man, everybody is high. Yeah, uh, to that, to it, that end, it's, it's something. I guess you should clarify. I've never talked to anyone that has admitted to me that they were on something at that point in time. Oh, okay. Okay, that's that, that makes more sense. Some I guarantee you someone was high. Okay, yeah, because I, I can believe that. Because the guy I worked with, he talked so slowly and methodically. It's like, they, he talked Had to like, be high. He talked like... <laughs> it's possible. He talked Definitely like possible. this man, like, seriously. That's one thing that I, I, I guess changed as far as like respect my perspective on society growing up from a kid and my like innocent little self to an adult <laughs> i didn't know that drugs were a thing until like fifth grade when we had dare class dare. And, i love and that dare, dare class told you about drugs yeah You're like dare, what no, see, okay there's some there's these exist you can get Literally, high now you you'd be you'd be crazy because i guess i guess wilmington's kind of like a drug city i guess so right. i know a lot of people that do drugs <laughs> Don't I don't don't support it. No drugs, people. Drugs are bad. Yeah, oh, right anyway. after you say do drugs, kids. <laughs> that was a joke. Calm down. <laughs> um, j calm down, LJ. Smoke some weed. <laughs> 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 anyway, so there's a lot of people that do drugs, and I every single one of them was like, yeah, I never heard about this until a dare class. <laughs> wow. Literally, dare helped introduce them to it. <laughs> It backfired. <laughs> it's like, don't do drugs, kid. Kids. Oh wow, really? Now I want to do drugs. <laughs> but oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, my perspective as a kid, it's like I didn't really, I didn't realize drugs were even a thing, let alone as prevalent as it actually is. And now being like working in the food industry, going around town, you know, driving around, and just. My perspective on people has changed so much from where I was like, yeah, everybody is super, super uppity and not uppity, but happy and you know, joy, contributing, joy. Happy, yeah, happy, contributing to society, going out and getting stuff done. And now it's like, oh, we're doomed. Uh, well, I everybody, mean, yeah, we are. We everybody are is. <laughs> the one thing I realize as I grow older is that nobody knows what they're doing. Nobody, nobody knows nobody what they're doing. Yeah. doing. And that, you look see, at that, that person, that's basically like, the, they got that's the overarching they, they don't. You fake it till you make it, dude. It's like I sometimes yeah. I'm like you know as as a kid I was like man I can't wait till it's I'm, everybody's first time. Can't wait till I'm 18 years old. Unless like I'm told like man when I'm 18 years old I'm gonna have everything. I'm gonna know how to do all the stuff. And 18 years old I'm like so. Nobody taught me how to do taxes. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's just a thing. Like, it's a thing where you're like, so, okay, you have to, you have to file a taxes now. And people are like, okay, cool. And so you have to t file my estate. And you're like, all right, great. How do I do that? And I was like, dude, don't, thank don't God you know? for Google and the internet. And oh, how do people do taxes before how, the internet? I don't know. How did, did you how do you anything? As, as I understand it from my father who talked about his father doing taxes, papers on a table. Like yeah yeah like you'd have to sit around and do all that of paper on one table and like I guess I don't know a Stone Age calculator. I just mean like like how did they know like what numbers they need to put in and where it needs to go and where to send it to? I mean I guess it, like you really have to read, but it's just. But where would you get those books from? I guess like did I, they sell them? Did you get them at the library? Just, uh, it's just so much things that I like simple things that everyone should know, but for whatever reason I just didn't know. Here was my yeah. tax experience this year. All right, I realized like I did taxes before the hard way. I did it once the hard way. The second year, I realized that. Oh, by this the thing way, called... kids, taxes, freaking suck. No, they suck. Wouldn't it be nice? But... Not to get all political or anything, but it would just it would just be nice if there was a much easier way of doing taxes rather than all these different brackets and everything. Yeah, because oh, so like easier. we filed for an LLC for a uh, TDB podcast. I still have to file the taxes. This is my job. My job for people who wonder like, oh, what does Kahi do? I do I do taxes. That's my thing. Apparently, it's law. I have to make sure it's all anything the taxes to do with the done. law and making sure we don't break it. Right. You're basically what like a, 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 you're a very legal babysitter for us, and like the yeah. law is a vase, and you're just trying to make sure we don't knock the vase over. Yeah, basically. Because 
And we keep running but around yeah, the table. Like we, we had a file for, <laughs> like, we filed for our LLC. Was it this year? Yeah, it was this like January. Year. Yeah, it January. Was, 2015. Um, yeah, I guess so. So that was when, uh, pin, like, right in time for tax season, too. Ugh. Bad idea. Yeah. Because, yeah. <laughs> in retrospect. No, no, no. It was, <laughs> it was a good we idea. should have waited like a couple months and then done it. But it was a bad idea. <laughs> so, but, but this time, but, we're going to be prepared. We're going to go and we're going to hit those taxes hard. We're going to be like, man, we're uh -huh. so adulty. We're, I we're still don't know what do. I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, LJ, <laughs> what, ta what, what, what form do you file, huh? Is it the I-83 or the, the W-240? I had to file. I had to sign out like it's, four um, different forms. It's not even because I just made those yeah. up. No, I have no. Nobody knows what's going on. It's. Uh, I don't freaking know what's going on. Do you freaking know what's going on? No one knows what's going. On. It's like, LJ, you as an employee have have it easy. Freaking me and Kai, I'm the CE, and Kai's yeah. like our business manager. We have to do all the other forms, like all, all the other, other forms? five Dude, forms. Yeah, I know. We had to. Like, I, I we had to fill out some bars. Like, do, do I sign here? Is this that? where I'm it supposed to do? It sounded brutal. I'm, oh man, we had to like we we were talking about all these different <laughs> forms. Like, all right, what is an EIN <laughs> number? <laughs> where? Right, exactly. What's the EIN number? How do we get one? We had to go to the bar to go to the bank. He, he, had, to, he like, had to open up a bank account in our name. Yeah, I was like, oh yeah. man. I was, and then another thing, bank accounts. That's that's fun. Banks are cool, mm, I guess. Geez. You know what's really annoying? <laughs> Freaking overdraft fees. Go. Overdraft is the stupidest <laughs> system in the world. Hey, listen, hey kids, kids. When you get a bank account, when you get a bank account, usually when you first sign up, they opt you into an overdraft protection. They say protection like it's a good thing. Really, what it means is that if you overcharge your account, like you pay for something like that was like $3, and you only had $2 in your account, you get charged a fee. So that could be like a $20 fee for like a dollar overdraft. It's called protection because they're paying for the item that you wanted to get instead of just denying it. Fun advice, you can opt out of that at most banks. I only accidentally did that once and I was able to get them to revert. Yeah, sometimes you can get the fee reverted. It depends on the bank, depends on the day of the person. My advice is to get what's known as a credit debit card. Oh, yeah? Yeah, okay. So a credit debit card is basically, it's a card that's treated like a credit card. So there's no charges applied to it. But it's also treated like a debit card in terms of accounting. So you can't go over, you can't do overdraft if you uh, do for credit debit card. It will reject it as soon as you hit zero. Oh, interesting. interesting. It, it, it's actually really useful. Uh, yeah, because I've got a debit card right. and I've got a credit card, but I didn't know. That. Oh, well, sometimes I do wish I had a credit card so I could build credit for one and also go back um, and get, um, you know, the others. Uh, like, there's some stuff where I know I'm going to get paid and I just need to buy this right now. Like, if I'm at Comic-Con, right. you know? Oh, you don't have a credit card? I don't have a credit card. I just have a oh, credit card. that's interesting. I'm glad so, I've got both. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. thinking about getting a an actual credit card and opening up a line of credit and uh, doing that all way because I need to get credit if I'm going to buy a house or do any of that stuff later on that too. I don't some advice. Some advice: keep your balance low. Don't make big purchases. Even even when you um, make payments to it on time, if your balance is too high, it lowers your credit your credit score. Wait, really? Yes, but also not yes. not, not always though. I I I found out that it is. I mean, I've talked to different friends and uh, different like more you know older people who've done this. If you can pay for it, if you can pay for something, it is like for especially if you do a big purchase. Like just say I'm buying an Xbox and I have the I have the money. I physically have the money for an Xbox. It's actually better to buy that on credit and pay that at the end of the month because you you start to build up that credit rating. Because when you start, yeah. right? Yeah, if you when pay you start, it off, then you're fine. Right. When, when initially when you start. You don't have any credit, and you need that. And it's never one of those catch-22 things where you can't get credit without building it. Yeah. So, for instance, I can't apply for, like, PayPal or, like, Google Wallet because they don't have a credit score on me because I don't have one. I don't have anything. I don't have any record if I, I'm good or Oh, yeah. What I, what I meant is, like, if you're going to be making the minimum monthly payments and your balance is really high, your credit oh, score is well, going to go down. Yeah, no. go down. Yeah, yeah. You need, you need, if you're going to make a big purchase, you need to be able to pay it off. But yeah, that's finances yeah, you for can, you. No, okay, but back to what that. I was saying. I could do a whole No, back to what I was saying. Even. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So if, taxes. If you, if, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Back right, to what right. I was saying. Just okay, right. to really finish the debit thing. Okay, right, sure. If you okay. do have overdraft, make, when you get a bank account, most banks allow you to opt out of the overdraft protection thing. You just have to go to your bank and talk to them and just say, hey, can I get, can I get removed from that? And you're good, and they'll decline your card just like a credit card. So you can't get overdrafted, and you won't have to pay that fee. And everything will be good. Hooray. Anyway, continue. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just going to say back to what I was saying about taxes. This year for taxes is what I did. I got my tax form, took my uh, took my phone out, took a picture of it, and uh, TurboTax 
filled everything in for me. And I, I just I had to answer some questions and I hit okay, you know, all that stuff, hit okay, taxes were filed. Pretty That's pretty cool. Freaking cool. Technology has come quite a lot. Technology's great. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. TTV Talks technology. We should probably wrap up. Probably. We should. I, I, yeah. I want to talk about the kids, though. That's, that's, that's Wait, the main thing. Like, talk, I, the, the last thing the, I've noticed talk about becoming what? adult is, like, kids. Just, like, kids these days. Like, yes, adults <laughs> do have kids. I know. I was saying that, like, I recently saw... If thing. you're about to have this conversation on how you found a 17-year-old attractive... No, what? No, Wait, I was yeah. going to say... What? what? I was going to say <laughs> oh, okay. that oh my recently... Goodness. I I was watching The Little Mermaid with my family because they went. Oh no! My you family. found Ariel attractive? No, <laughs> there's that point where she's like she's about to run, like she's t- she's mad at her dad. He's like, oh, I, I met this prince. I want to run away and be for forever. And her dad's like, no, you're 16. You're not gonna go run away and from my kingdom and be with I this th- prince that you literally going. just saw. That's not gonna happen. And he's uh-huh. like, oh, screw you, dad. And she does the thing. And in that oh, moment, no, I was like, he's like, no, this. I'm an adult. And like in that moment, in my head, I was like. No, you are not, young lady. Sit down. Right. Okay. And that like, is how you Whoa. can tell when you're an adult. Yeah. I was if like, you watch The Little Mermaid and you're on Ariel's side, you're still a kid. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? You just met this guy. You're, you are not going anywhere. You are going to your oh, room. Oh, my goodness. And you're going to think sh- about what you've done. That should be our, our company's maturity And then test. Disney created yeah. I'm trying to <laughs> take in this scene from the famous film The Little Mermaid. Well, it can't be anymore because everyone's going to hear this. And ah, the answer. that's true. Okay, now we'll, 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 we'll get another That's happening in so many yeah. different ways. Yeah. Like Disney, where Disney creating unrealistic standards like, for young girls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, no. Unre- unrealistic maturity standards for women. <laughs> I mean, oh, they got no. they got the handsome princes and everything, making unrealistic standards for males as well. But well, nobody cares about men. <laughs> Gosh. No, no, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. I mean, I understand like, <laughs> women have it, but yeah. Anyway, anyway, anyway. anyway. Yeah, no, like like Tarzan, he's not an unrealistic expectation. People are going to take this conversation to be like, oh my god, TTV hates women. <laughs> <laughs> no, we agree. There's a problem. There is a problem in the world, and there is a problem with standards. It's why we only have one on not- the cast. <laughs> no, it's it's because it's we're a Bionicle we fan. A we're a Bionicle fan podcast, that's just but we're bad. all fans of Gen 1, oh, yeah. so that's why we only have one in the game. <laughs> yeah, stick girl. to that Bionicle stuff. Exactly. <laughs> but this Man, is a Bionicle show. It. Women be crazy these days, am I right? See, see I, I'm nope. going to try and nope. I'm feel we're, not, we're not doing this. We're not. <laughs> gonna, no, we're not. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. I'm going to veer back a little bit. All men were created equal. Including the some women. were created more equal than others. <laughs> we are getting into some very serious <laughs> yoga here. Women are proof that God exists because no one else could make something so complicated. Come on! No! <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get so much fun. <laughs> Uh, I love that one comment just turned I mean, derailed. We're completely off track now. I like, how, I like how we issues. realize it's bad, but we just keep going. <laughs> you you know. keep digging your grave. Keep digging uh-huh. ourselves. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's something we haven't God. had to deal with yet too much as adults is considering our when we die our, uh, we're all, our well, mortality is serious. always inevitable but you have a higher odds at this chance of living another day right right what's it going to be like when TTV talks about being elderly oh, TTV talks, talks about, about the Roth yeah. IRA that we never invested in <laughs> I did <laughs> Back we, oh you did hey Takuma Invest like money, I said, we yeah, do an Woo. entire episode about finances. Uh, All right, we're gonna, we're gonna, man, my friends are getting married. What's going on? Marriage is a weird thing. Oh, no. My weird. friends are getting married. I'm going Why to weddings we that weren't parts. addressed to my family. I got an invitation addressed to me. All right, <laughs> these are my friends. I my one of my best friends, who's a year younger than I am, is getting married in a couple months. What? One of my friends that I've known since fourth grade has a kid. What is going on? I'm not I supposed don't to have be this any old. friends. I was just a kid, you ever, like a couple you of days. Like, like, it feels like a couple of days ago. You remember kids that can't have kids. No, you know, we just established adults have kids. You have like a thing where every time a, a friend of yours becomes a parent, you remember the stupid thing they did as a teenager, and you're like, <laughs> that person's a dad. <laughs> what? Oh, okay, why is it always the guy that has to do the stupid? Oh, okay. We're we having an early life crisis end. now. We're having an early... Yeah, I know. We're going to have so many crises as we go along. We got to end. Okay. Shut up. All right. All right. Well, I'm, I'm wrapping this up. Thank you all for watching, everybody. <laughs> I hope you found this entertaining, <laughs> enjoyable, or insightful. <laughs> or, or insulting. maybe just insulting. insulting. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you hate TTV now. <laughs> maybe you hate us because of that exchange. 
I mean, you, you can't possibly hate us as much as we hate women, though. Am I right? Oh, no. <laughs> no. You did not just go okay. there. You did not okay. just say That's those words on air. That's our new slogan. TTV. Can't hate us as much as we hate women. I hope they realize we're saying this ironically. Anyway. Not even ironically. It's a satire. It's a complete joke. It's a complete joke. Mm. Anyway, um, thank joke. you for watching. Be sure to check us out in Vessel, vessel.com forward slash TTV channel. You can watch all of our content a week in advance if you pay for early access, only $3 a month. Or you can just watch our content on Vessel at all, or, you know, without paying, and you get it at the same time that we come out on YouTube. Helps us out either way. Helps us out a lot more than YouTube. And a lot more. <clears throat> so much more. So much more. So continue being a cool person, and enjoy our content regardless of where you watch it. That, that basically wraps us all up, though, and we'll see you guys next time. I'm Var. I'm LJ. I'm Kahi. I'm Takuma Nuva. And goodbye. Goodbye.